Ah, hey guys. So if you've been saving to buy a house in the last say six months or so, then the interest that you would have generated from your deposit would have made around two thousand dollars or so. So something like this is your deposit, and here's two thousand dollars. But if you then had your house deposit in the stock market, you would have made around twenty thousand dollars. So twenty thousand dollars, something like that. But if you were a homeowner in the last six months or so, then I think you would have increased your net worth around one hundred eighty thousand dollars. So one hundred eighty thousand. Wow, you know, Australian house prices have just really gone insane in the last few months, and I think it's really about time that we start to restrict lending. And that's kind of what guys like the treasurer Josh Frydenberg and even ComBank CEO Matt Coleman are saying. So, what does this mean for you, and how does it affect you? Well, let's dive in and find out. So house prices here in Australia have pretty much gone absolutely haywire, and this time it's completely different from the last boom back in 2016, which was largely driven by investors. So this time it's actually the first home buyers that are competing against other first home buyers, and they're pretty much all backed by the bank of mum and dad. Now the low supply of houses is kind of making the issue worse because every buyer that fails to win an auction. Gets more determined and sort of more mentally prepared to pay more the next time that they go to bid, and this is all happening now because it's coupled with the lowest ever interest rates that we've ever had right now, and that's essentially just rocket fuel for house prices. Now, low interest rates means two things. So the first is that repayments are lower for existing mortgage holders. So that's really good for the economy because it means that owners have more disposable income to spend. This is something that we call the wealth effect. And the second point is that greater borrowing power for people looking to get a mortgage. Now, the second point is the most important one because it's raising a lot of questions about you know how sustainable this growth is. Questions like you know how is it possible to borrow so much to to borrow so much money when there's such little wage growth happening. And this is a really valid question because it's actually a ratio that's constantly being monitored, and that's called the debt to income ratio. So that's the value of your mortgage divided by your income. Now, traditionally, the debt to income ratio is around four times for around forty percent of the mortgage holders, and it's about between four to six times for another forty percent of mortgage holders. And then we have the mortgage holders that's over the six times the debt to income ratio are usually in the teens percent. So if you earn, let's say, I don't know, one hundred thousand dollars a year, then your mortgage will have to be more than six hundred thousand dollars to be in this group. This is the most risky group of the lot, but you know, thankfully, this hasn't really changed much until very recently, when the mortgage holders with more than the six times debt to income ratio has crossed this twenty percent threshold. Now, this might not seem like much, but even a small shift in this ratio puts an exponentially larger percentage of people at risk of defaulting on their loans. And when that happens, Well, let's just say that we don't want a repeat of what happened to World Finance back in 2008. So it's actually so risky now that even ComBank CEO Matt Coleman is willingly raising the serviceability rate to try and stop borrowers from overextending themselves. Now, Matt Coleman is someone who makes money lending money to people, and even he is so concerned about people defaulting that he's happy to limit the loan books to try and put some brakes on the house prices. Even National Treasurer Josh Frydenberg is also concerned enough to give his backing to regulators to implement measures to slow price growth in the future as well. Now that's just all talk at the moment, but at least the conversation on how to slow it down has actually started. Well, actually, the body that's responsible for this is the APRA, or the Australian Prudential Regulation Authority. 
and they have power over the banking industry. And on the 6th of October, they wrote a letter to the banks telling them to officially raise their minimum interest rate buffer from 2.5% to 3%. The interest rate buffer is just a test that the banks apply to see if you can still afford the mortgage if interest rate you know, suddenly went up by 3%. So your interest rate might be say 2%, but to get approved for that 2% loan, you need to have enough income to support 5%. So now increasing this buffer should make it harder to get a loan and kind of decrease the number of loans getting approved. But if we actually look at the numbers here, that's an increase of 20% to the interest rate buffer. And it reduces maximum borrowing capacity of borrowers by about 5%. Now, here's my take on all of this. When you look at how much house prices here in Australia has grown in the past year, I think that 5% is gonna do very little to slow down house price growth. Especially in the next year or two when our international borders open up and the population tap gets turned on again. Even now, without all the students and migrants that are coming in from overseas, the rental yields on houses and units have gone up for the first time in the last couple of years. Now, couple that with the fact that the RBA has pretty consistently said that interest rates are not going to move until at least 2024. Then we're gonna have the two main factors that actually drive prices in perfect sync with each other. And that's gonna be population growth and low interest rates. Now check out these two graphs of the exact two factors combining to create the perfect conditions for a housing boom. Now I can actually draw a line of best fit on this graph and create an average growth rate. If the line goes above my line of best fit, it's probably due for a correction sometime. Now this is exactly what happened in 2017 when the APRA stepped in to limit interest only loans to investors and the market reacted with a bit of a slump. So all of this really just cements the strength of investing in bricks and mortar. And even returns on the ASX stock market have really struggled to keep up. Now, there's always gonna be a lot of media attention on Australian house price growth. The fact is, the housing is always gonna be limited and our population is still very low when we compare it to other developed nations. But I think as we slowly start to emerge from our lockdowns, we're gonna be heading towards another federal election and the market's definitely gonna be waiting to see who the victor will be and deciding if the boom will continue for the next few years or not. So definitely watch this space. Anyway, that's it from me on the new mortgage restrictions. If this was informative to you, then be sure to hit that like button as always and subscribe to the channel as well to keep up to date with the housing and stock market here in Australia. I'm The Healthy Investor and as always, thanks for watching.